Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at how to smoothly transition uh, from various camera angles to um, making a basic cutscene out of doing those sort of, sorts of things, right? Uh, so, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So, we've got a bunch of reflectors here, right? Um, for this first part of the video, we're just going to be taking a look at these uh, because these are the units you're going to need to know uh, for all of your transitioning needs, right? Uh, so let me show you what I mean by a smooth transition. So if I jump, it starts our start er, our jump detector and it goes through this cutscene, right? So you see how smooth all of this is? Obviously that was a jump, um, but then you go back to the smooth angles and stuff. We're going back to the right and then we're gonna zoom back out. Um, so how did I do that? Uh, so we've got our jump detector, right? And that activates your reflector. And then all of those camera angles put together will give us a, um, it, it gives us a cutscene because all of these uh, conflict, like I said in the tutorial series, right? So this will play, reflectors will play these in order um, of what they're supposed to do. So, how, uh, how did I get it so smooth, right? So let's take a look at our smooth pan transition. So panning goes, it starts out four movements away and by movements, I'm taking a look at the reflector, right? And I'm going one, two, three, four, all that good stuff, right? Um, this is the base amount that you can move any object in the game, uh, so like, this will still move the same amount regardless, okay? So it starts out four movements away from wherever it is. So this is a pan right because we're going this way. So this will start out one, two, three, four. It'll start out here, go through this, go four more, okay? And that will be the end of your first pan. Then it, you target this reflector over here and it does the same thing. So you get a nice transition of four, four away. Um, you can also make this a little more simple on yourself and start from one reflector, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you'll end up where your other one needs to be, right? So it's eight movements away for a smooth pan. Um, now let's take a look at zoom in and zoom out. So. In this instance, it's zoom in. Zoom out is basically the same thing. It just starts from back here and goes out. So zoom in starts four away. Okay, so it starts out here. One, two, three, four. You end up at your reflector. And then you go back, or, and then you start the next one four meters away, or uh, four, four movements away. So one, two, three, four. And uh, you'll have your smooth transition for zooming in. If I was to zoom out, it would start from back here, it'd go out four, and then I'd put the next reflector and do the same thing on this reflector, so it would go out another four, and stuff like that. So that's how you can get like a zoom in one way or a zoom out the other way, all that stuff. Um, just make sure that it's four, four movements apart for each of your reflectors. Um, if you want these to be the same, uh, if you want this movement to be consistent, uh, you do need to ha or make sure that all of your items are the same thing. So I don't want to put a zoom or a, a camera spell on a breadcrumb and then expect it to do the same thing on a reflector because this has a different zoom area or camera area than this does, right? Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, for your pan to zoom or zoom to pan, all that good stuff, uh, we're going to go through the rest of these. So this is going to be a pan to a zoom in, right? So we go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, and you can put your put your reflector back there, uh, and you'll have a smooth pan right to zoom in. If I did this to the left, I would just go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, and it would end up right here instead, right? Um, so you go four in the direction of your pan and then four in the direction of your zoom in, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, put your other reflector right there. Okay, 
uh, so back here we've got a zoom in to a pan right so this one this one's a lot simpler uh, you'll go one two three or one two three four okay and you'll put it basically just four in the direction of whatever your pan is because your camera will already start out at the perfect angle for you to just zoom on over um, and then the last one we're going to take a look at is the pan to zoom out uh, and this one much like uh, your pan, or your zoom in to pan it's going to be four in the direction of your pan okay so one two three four and then you can just put down your reflector um, because it'll automatically be at the right angle for it needs to be basically um, so I hope that made sense or all this made sense uh, we'll take a look just one more time at what that does so we go boom we've hit the other one boom and then we go in so that was the four four and the first one was the eight this is our two zoom in so four zoom in to pan four over and the pan to zoom out is four over as well and then it just zooms out automatically um, so yeah, I hope this first part made sense. Um, again, you do want to make sure you're using the same item, otherwise you'll have some weird zoom in problems, like you'll, you'll have a jittery angle and you'll have to move these measurements a lot. Um, but at the very least for your back and your, your pan left or right, those should always be the same. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that makes sense if it doesn't uh, i can answer any uh, or answer any questions you guys have in the comments um but yeah i hope i hope that makes sense um so what's our actual project for this video uh, because that was just an introductory to camera angles and how you can work with them this is what we're actually going to be working with today so we've got this cut scene i've put together uh, you activate it via any activator in this case a button right so i've got this so we have our boat move, and we have a bunch of water effects going on and stuff. We've got the shark, tempest, all that stuff. There's, uh, you'll notice there was like a pan, a pan, and then a zoom in. Um, so that's that's basically what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is a very simple, um, in terms of stuff you'll need to know, this is a very simple cutscene to make. Um, so. Uh, let's get started with it. So our shopping list uh, for this cutscene, you're going to need the one boat. I'm going to take this with me because I didn't have enough money to buy a new one. Um, or there wasn't one in the bazaar, but either way, I need it. Uh, you're going to need one button, two reflectors, and then two invisible objects. Right? Uh, so these these are the two invisible objects you'll need these are the two reflectors you'll need um, in this case this one just happens to be another reflector but it doesn't matter what this one or this one is as long as it's invisible okay um, and then you'll also need three crates and we're going to be stacking these crates on top of each other like this eventually um, and then you'll need a blue trim drug okay that's all your physical items um, for your uh, your your castle magic spells, you're going to be needing a zoom towards for all players, two pan left for all players, two 250 card cardinal directions, right? So in this case, I'm using two 250 north. Um, then you'll need one shark, one tempest, and one activate reflector. Okay, so uh, let's go and make all that again over here. So let's start out, we'll have our button, doesn't matter where we place it, I'm going to put it here. Uh, and then we've got our boat, we're going to face it this way because this direction is north in our house. Okay, uh, we are going to, now I've already done all the measuring for this um, before, so I'm just going to place everything where it needs to go and then we'll like uh, work it up basically. So we are going to put a invisible object here facing the boat and then another invisible object uh, 10 movements away so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 
And this one's also going to be facing in this direction. Both of these towards the boat. The boat faces this way. Um, and then we're going to put our reflectors down. So we need one right here, or here rather. So one, two, three. Right, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so that's going to go there. And then we need to move this um, eight this way. So one, two, three, four, five. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eventually we're going to need that to be there. And then we're going to put our crates on top of each other, like so. We're going to put this here, put our reflector up top, move these one more, make sure our reflector is facing away from us, like so. And then we're going to take our rug that we got, we're not placing it down, we're going to twist it until it catches the boxes. Okay, then we can place it and pick everything up. Now, just to make sure this is staying up in the air, whenever we come back to our house, you want to click on it, click move, don't move your mouse, and click again to where you hear that placement noise. Okay, now we're going to do the, uh, we're going to put down our other reflector. So this one just below goes one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, because this one was a pan zoom in. Okay, and then we're gonna put our put our boxes back up. Done. Make sure this is facing the right way. Put it on top. Then move it one over. Uh, let's just make sure we have this right. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing to get our boxes out of the way like we did last time. So there we go. We can place that down and pick everything back up. And then we got to make sure that that's where it needs to be. <coughs> Okay, so that is all of our placement done. So let's get started on the actual castle magic section of this. So we need to go into our utility spells, and we're going to make this button activate this reflector right here. Okay, uh, it technically could be this one. It's just you need to activate one of the reflectors. But I'm going to use this one for this video. Uh, then we are going to do some uh, some more utility spells. So we are going to pan left here. So we're going to make sure to pan left on the boat. And then we're going to pan left on this reflector. Now, let's make sure we've got this right. So we activate that. We pan out. We pan out. So it looks like we have a small issue here in that our uh, our reflector is, I think, one off. So we're going to move this back. I'm going to use myself as a, uh, a thing here. We're going to go right there instead. And we're going to make sure that that's working before we let go. So we go pan. Pan. Gotta make sure that worked. Oh no, yeah, no, it's too too far. Uh, this is this is what I mean by uh, using using your reflectors uh, to do your panning a lot of the time, uh, because you run into issues like this. So we're going to move this back one, and I think over. No, it should be fine there. We go dot and then dot. 
Okay. We're going to leave that as is. Um, it's basically there. I think the boat might just be in a weird position. Um, but you can always tinker around with this as much as you'd like um, to where these flow the, the way you want them to. Um, but onto the camera, the rest of the camera angles. Uh, so we've got our pan left, pan left, and then we're going to do a zoom toward on this one, right? So you want to make sure that your uh, camera angles and stuff, like keep your castle magic clean is the best advice I can give you for this. So we go dot, dot, and then we zoom in. Okay, perfect. So those camera angles are working just like we want them to. Um, and yeah, so again, make sure that these are all together, right? So we've got our camera spells together and then we're gonna have our movement spells together and the rest of our spells together. Um, but anyway, so the next thing we wanna do is get our boat moving. So we've got a boat going north and we've got a second boat going north by 250 units. So let's make sure that goes how we want it to. So it's gonna move, it's gonna move, and then it's gonna stop. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so that is the movement and the camera angles. And the last thing we need to do is add our effects in. So we're gonna go to the effect spells. We are going to put Tempest, if I can get to it. We're gonna make Tempest target this invisible item that we have, right? In this case, it's a breadcrumb. And then we are going to have Storm Shark right here target this other invisible item that we have. Okay, and the end result should look just like we had it before. There we go. So that is um, our first introduction to a reasonably simple um, cutscene. Uh, and I say reasonably simple because the other one that we're going to be taking a look at um, in our next video, as soon as I get back here, you'll see has start detectors, timers, and all this other good stuff. And it involves a bunch of stuff. Um, but that is how we do a simple cutscene. Um, yeah, it just uses one reflector to do all of this, uh, but it is very useful as you or as you saw. Um, so, anyways, I hope you guys uh, were able to follow along. And I hope this made sense. Uh, again, if you do have questions. I can answer them both in the next video or in the comments, um, depending on how pressing they are sort of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, in the next one, we'll go ahead and take a look at how to make a more complex cutscene. Um, that one's a lot more fun. Uh, and then we'll do just whatever else you, you guys want to see. Um, but anyways, uh, I would really appreciate a like, subscribe, comment, any questions or concerns or uh anything else you want to say down in the comments. Um, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.